as a father, as an uncle. I don't have a number to call right now. Uh, and that's not emotional, that's fact-based. I'm putting my loved one more at risk in, 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 in making that call because one of the things that we don't have in the BIPOC community in terms of this discussion is trust. Trust of the system. People were impervious to it. And if they were in the majority, if they were white, and he said, who amongst us would be willing to trade the color of their skin and be content with those who counsel patients in delay? And kind of like Dr. King's letter from a Birmingham jail. I think this is a big deal. Try walking in my shoes. You see, when it comes to our community members, there are no second chances to get it right. So we need to start 988 equitably. For mental health and substance use emergencies, we're still where we were 50 years ago. We're accustomed to seeing police respond to calls about mental health emergencies. We're also accustomed to seeing jails and emergency rooms as the default treatment facilities. Over 90% of response, respondents reported that the current U.S. psychiatric emergency response system is not equitable. I mean, these are very significant statistics and suggest that we really have a long road ahead of us, but we need to be intentional about this. Lyndon Cameron, Antonio Martinez, Paul Castaway, Ricardo Munoz, Walter Wallace Jr., Eleanor Bumpers. This list goes on for way too long, and these are just a few names that we acknowledge. Someone in crisis needs to believe that there is life after crisis. It didn't happen by accident that we have an inequitable system. It wasn't by accident that care and tribal communities and other historically oppressed, excluded, um, communities that the mental health care and health care is less than. But this is our chance to fix it. We are building a new system. I felt that pressure on my shoulder for months afterwards when I, whenever I thought about that night. Then I found myself trying to answer all kinds of questions with high anxiety. First responders and the wider community of professionals, crisis center workers, victim advocates, and mental health providers need education and training to help them better understand autism. Making sure that people have access to the resources that are necessary um, in order to do that, whatever that means for them, right? Whether that's around their different cultural makeups, um, where they live, having access to mental health providers. We need the whole spectrum, but we also need to be able to see it from an equity lens. Um, and I think that this is a unique opportunity to do things very differently. 988 offers us great hope that individuals experiencing a mental health crisis will receive the same level of care of those experiencing a medical emergency. Bold investments in increasing the size and the diversity of the workforce, creating the system and the infrastructure that's necessary, not only to meet people at the time of crisis, but also making sure that we can transform our human and social safety nets. These services will be a game changer for patients who aren't getting the care they need right now. It's especially important that we get this right for the millions of people who will be relying on 988 when it launches this summer. And at that time I said, the main message of my report on mental health is that culture counts. It should echo through the corridors and communities of this nation. That was true 21 years ago, but it's still true today. Although this nation has made progress in the field of mental health, we continue to fail at embedding culture, diversity, and equity into understanding how to support all citizens with their mental health.